When you hear the name Smoky Mountains, you probably start thinking about the mountains of southern Appalachia. The Great Smoky Mountains are, after all, one of America's most iconic mountain ranges. Nestled within the deep green ravines of the southern Appalachians, the Smokies encompass some of the eastern United States' largest remaining forests. But their name, seemingly straightforward to anyone who has seen them, has a more interesting story. The story of why they're smoky in the first place. But first, a brief history lesson. The Smokies are part of the larger Blue Ridge mountain chain, which itself stretches from Georgia to southern Pennsylvania along the front range of the Greater Appalachians. The first mention of any smokiness at all in these mountains comes from their original inhabitants, the Cherokee Indians, who called this region Shikanahe, meaning land of the blue smoke. Once white settlers began to arrive, they adapted the name and began calling the area the Smoky Mountains. As settlement continued, the Cherokee were forced out of their ancestral homeland in what was to become known as the Trail of Tears. Even the forests themselves were not spared, as logging operations threatened much of the Smoky Mountains in the 19th and 20th centuries. In 1934, however, Great Smoky Mountains National Park was established. And so, the forests were spared, and the Smoky Mountains could go on being smoky. That's because the density and diversity of trees in these mountains is what gives them their smoky appearance in the first place. The Smokies are home to over 1,600 species of flowering plants, 450 species of non-vascular plants, and 4,000 species of fungi, making it one of the most biodiverse areas in North America. And all of that vegetation means that there are a lot of plants producing a lot of chemicals. These chemicals are called volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. Humans produce harmful VOCs when we burn fossil fuels, and are one of the main components of the smog we see in urban areas. But plants produce them to help attract pollinators, to fend against pests, or even communicate with one another. And when plants emit these VOCs into the atmosphere, they interact with atmospheric ozone, causing moisture to condense on the particles. Blue light is then scattered from these particles, producing that blue haze the Smokies are so famous for. But that's not all. All of that vegetation means that lots of plants are transpiring as well, which is when plants lose water vapor from their leaves. All of this moisture in the air creates clouds and mists, giving the mountains even more smokiness. In fact, there's so much moisture and rain here that the Smokies are classified as a temperate rainforest. Unfortunately though, the Smokies are facing new threats. Where once logging threatened these majestic forests, air pollution and invasive species have taken its place. Pollution from nearby power plants, industrial plants, and automobiles originates outside the park, but ends up settling in the park as prevailing winds blow pollutants in the park's direction before being trapped by the height of its mountains. This means pollutant concentrations in the Smokies are some of the highest anywhere on the East Coast. At times, smog in the park has been so bad that visibility has been reduced to less than a mile. But air pollution is also threatening the very trees that give the Smokies their brilliant blue haze. The National Park Service estimates that up to 30 species of plants could be affected by increased ozone levels in the park. They also estimate that air pollution is causing rainfall in the park to be 5 to 10 times more acidic than normal, which, when absorbed into the soil, limits the availability of forest nutrients. These soils are becoming so acidified that the Park Service worries the health of its high elevation ecosystems are in danger. And, as if that's not bad enough, Invasive hemlock woolly adelgids threaten to wipe out the entirety of the park's eastern hemlocks, some of which are more than 500 years old. And so, the Smokies face more threats than one. Threats which endanger the very trees which help give them their name. But the diversity and abundance of life here helped inspire their protection nearly a century ago, and there's no doubt they can do the same again for the next hundred years. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about national parks and other protected areas, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.